Hey, this is Certified Health Coach Susan Zartman. It is Monday, July 3rd, 2017. And tonight, we're talking about chapters 14 and 15 in Dr. Wayne Scott Anderson's Dr. A's Habits of Health book. And can you guess what it might be about? We're gonna be talking about adding some motion to your life and not talking exercise, we're just talking about getting some movement. You know, I'm burning all kinds of calories here. I mean, am I making you tired? It's lights blinking are probably driving you crazy, driving me a little crazy. So anyway, wanted to uh, just kind of get you going here. Everything that we're talking about, all these Dr. Ray's Habits of Health are small incremental things that you can do that impact your health in big ways and they all add up. So tonight, we're going to be talking about chapters 14 and 15. And you know, 60% of us get no regular physical activity. 25% get no activity at all. 50% of those who begin exercising quit within six months. One year after purchase, 90% of all exercise equipment is unused and relegated to a cat rack or, or a coat rack or cat perch. Been there, done that. I got all kinds of exercise stuff here that I haven't touched for quite a while. Some of it I use, but not most of it. So I mean, what does that all mean? That until you've got your weight under control, increased your flexibility, developed a more active lifestyle, and organized your daily choices to support health, the honest truth is that launching yourself into a full-blown exercise program isn't likely to succeed. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's why in this chapter, we are going to focus on simple movements and activities that you can incorporate into your daily life, life right away, regardless of your current health, weight, or fitness level. Now, we'll say with our program, the first three weeks, we really don't want you doing a lot of exercise. We don't want any huffing or puffing or sweating. If you're already a regular exerciser, we say cut it back about in half. You're going to be doing a little bit less um, car pro, um, calories than you usually, usually eat. And so you don't want to overextend it because that can cause you to be hungry and then you want to eat more and that causes challenges. So anyway, that's the main reason for a lot of that. And so um, we just want to get you up into moving. And it's all about simplicity. And so keeping it simple, I like simple. Um, you know, weave motion and movement into the tapestry of your everyday life. You know what? Um, so much now of our environment today, most of us have sedentary jobs. They keep us bent over a computer screen for hours at a time. We've got all these great energy saving devices like elevators, escalators, and cars. You can hardly find sidewalks anymore. They rob our bodies of the flexibility, energy, expenditure, and muscle. But by tapping into your daily movements, even incrementally, you can create enough additional motion to offset the obesogenic effect in this automated world. Working within your existing daily routine, Dr. A's plan taps into all your myriad of natural movements. It's kind of the way the children, you know, they don't think about it. They just go out and play. And that's what we need to do is just get moving here. And um, I'm going to share my screen here. He had a little graphic talking about barriers to exercise. You know, we'll say, oh, I don't have enough time. I feel guilty about having time away from my family. Oh, I'm unable to work out five times a week, so why bother? Or they have excuses about the gym experience. It's intimidating. It's inconvenient. It's expensive. It makes me self-conscious. And other injuries might, or other excuses might be you're afraid that you might aggravate an old injury. It's too hard. Don't see results. Or it's boring. So anyway, have you said any of those things? I have. So anyway, um, we're going to be talking here about your physical activity level. Remember, we talked about that the last couple of weeks, and it's part of your total energy expenditure. That has to do with your body's motion. You know what? Your that activity thermogenesis, your AT, is actually one thing that can change on your how many calories you're burning every day. And uh, let's see, there's two components. We're going to talk about eat and neat. And eat is um, thermogenesis through exercise. So it's exercise, exercise activity thermogenesis. So this would be activities performed expressly for the purpose of improving fitness. In other words, exercise. 
Things like sports, workouts, and jogging. They usually take place at a specific play in time, and they may range in intensity from a walk in the park to a grueling triathlon. And from what we studied last week, EAT takes up less than 2% of your weekly time. So that makes it a really less efficient way to burn energy. In addition, exercise stimulates several metabolic pathways, a process that may actually make you want to eat more. This state known as compensation is particularly prevalent among women when they start exercising. How many times you go, oh, I just took this big old walk so I can have the ice cream sundae. Yeah, it usually doesn't burn nearly as many calories as you think it does. My throat's a little scratchy, and I'm not sure why. But anyway, eat the planned exercise. It's more like going to graduate school, so we don't necessarily want to start there. And while exercise comprises only a small, small part of your daily activity, if it's done at all, its ability to build muscle can help increase your calorie burning potential. Now the other thing, we had eat, and then there's neat. And then neat is what we want to keep building on tonight. Um, and you know what I was going to tell you, that the thing, he did a tour on the top of 181. It had to do with the eat, the exercise. And he says, once you've got the basics of the neat, which is daily non-exercise activities, then you can incorporate those eat exercises into your life because those things will help you prevent heart disease, strokes, diabetes, and other chronic disease, boost your overall mood, lower high blood pressure, reduce stress, strengthen muscles, bones, and joints, improve metabolism, and increase your energy level. They strengthen your immune system while decreasing the CRP levels and inflammation. Those can help prevent depression and increase your bone density and pre prevent osteoporosis. So anyway, um, then moving on to NEAT, which is the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This is all the movements your body makes outside of the planned exercises. Hey, can you do that? So it's a much more efficient way to fight calorie creep and a more important contributor to energy expenditure. Plus, it's a lot easier to do. In fact, you're already doing it. So you can think of NEAT as your exercise training wheels. So. Things you can do while you're sitting, standing, walking, talking, toe tapping, guitar playing, dancing, singing, shopping, gum chewing, and fidgeting. What do they all have in common? They're all part of NEAT. I got this little even exercise peanut. I'm trying to squeeze it and I can burn some calories. I could toss it from side to side and I could do something else here. Anyway, those are all going there and uh, something as simple as Changing your posture can have a dramatic impact on your balance. Even when you're sitting, it's so important to sit back, support with your core. That's engaging all these muscles and actually helping you burn more calories. Um, and knee can be hard to measure since it's made up of so many diverse activities. Um, so let's see, what else do we have here? Go to one page 82, 182. It talks about work. It makes up a big part of our day and presents a very different set of obesogenic conditions and challenges. Obesogenic are the things that kind of contribute to a fat, overweight lifestyle versus a leptogenic, which is one of the thin and lean lifestyle. The average person spends 46 hours a week at work. Combine that with transportation to and from our workplace and fully one third of our lives are spent connected to the job. And although what we do when we're working isn't always under our control, there are a number of potential openings for our motion plan, even during the working hours. What about your leisure time? <clears throat> That's when you have a little bit more control, but an increasing number of energy saving devices have crept into every nook and cranny of our lives that make the far from making our lives better. Most of these advancements are actually robbing us of our daily activity and health. Good news. Something as trivial even as chewing gum. It can increase your energy expenditure 20% above your resting level. That means 20% more calories burned. Hey, what a great ad for a sugar-free gum that would be. A mindless motion like fidgeting can raise energy expenditures up to 20 to 40%. And strolling along while shopping at the mall, even at a slow pace of one mile per hour, doubles your energy expenditure. Pick up the pace to two or three miles per hour, you'll nearly triple it. 
So movements like this are key components of Dr. A's Habits of Motion system. And we do wanna warn you that, hey, before you start doing any kind of extra movement stuff, especially uh, adding some different, um, more strenuous things for you or outside the range, check with your doctor. Um, you know, we are not trying to uh, replace your doctor or any medical advice. And as of any exercise program, if at any point during your workout, you begin to feel faint, dizzy, or have physical discomfort, stop immediately and consult a physician. And you may want to invest in some tools, like I've got my Fitbit on. And the Fitbit actually even has a heart rate monitor, so it kind of tells me, you know, my, how many beats per minute my heart's going, get pity pat, pity pat. How many steps? And you know, it's kind of fun because it's like there are times that I'll, oh my gosh, I'm almost to my goal. So it encourages me to walk a little bit more. And by looking at that, I see days where, man, I didn't get out and move much. But it's just more like a, a measure so you know what you are or what you're not doing. And um, so that'd be something maybe to consider. And then, um, let's see. When we go into chapter 15, page 185. He's talking about part one of the NEAT system. And this is designed for everyone. It's easy, it's effective, and you can do it. You already are. We're just gonna make you neater. So it's kind of like the story of the tortoise and the hare. By making small daily choices, you can win the race of weight maintenance and set the stage for exercise at your own pace. Dr. A's neat system adds motion to every aspect of your day, but gradually, so it won't seem like much of an effort at all. And that's especially helpful for people who aren't used to exercising or who have a body mass index of above 30. By just making these little neat motions a part of your daily routine, you'll soon accomplish your primary goal of offloading a couple of hundred calories each day. And that's gonna help everything keep running smooth. And once you've lost some weight, and you're feeling better, you'll be ready to go. So anyway, he's got the six S's of success. So the six neat categories are stance, standing, strolling, stairs, samba, and switch. So when it comes to stance, stance is your posture. So when the muscles that support your body's core axis, your chest, your shoulders, your back, your legs, and your abdominals, they are all properly aligned, they create balance throughout your body. Focusing on these foundational muscles will help you burn more calories, and it provides great training for your transition to the eat exercises to come. This focus is particularly important when you're sitting, a position we find ourselves a lot in when we're in our automated world. Computers, cubicle meetings, commuting, and the mechanization of manual jobs, they all reduce our natural mobility. Not to mention TVs, Game Boys, remotes, drive through restaurants, a deadly double whammy. Cars and shuttles as you proceed through these six S's, find some great ways to get up and move. You know what? Sitting is one of the best times to work on your posture. So find a proper chair that will help you sit up straight. Now flex your stomach muscles and take deep breaths. You want to burn an extra 60 calories without lifting a finger? You can by paying attention to the first two S's. The first two neat categories, stance and standing, they may not seem like much movement at all. In fact, they're really just baseline body positions. <clears throat> but if you could put a pair of electron x-ray glasses and observe your muscles at the microscopic level, you'd be amazed to see that your muscle cells are in continuous motion. At their most microscopic level, your muscles are made up of tiny units called sarcomeres. I said that right? These tiny sarcomeres expend energy constantly as they slide back and forth, keeping your muscles at just the right tension to do their job. <clears throat> By focusing on your body position and effort, you can put more demand on these muscle fibers and improve your overall health. Mm. Drinking's a good thing too, right? Water, it's just flavored sparkling water. No calories, no carbs. <clears throat> but, so neat ideas. For stance, at work, focus on sitting up straight in meetings. Get up and move around as much as possible, but when you must sit at your desk, try using a balance ball chair, which forces you to use your core muscles for support. Or at home, focus on sitting up straight while watching TV or even riding in the car. 
even better, get up and move whenever you can. I don't know if you can see, I didn't take a picture of it. That's the little ball chair. So you can kind of get on there and see those little exercise balls. And we had one of those at some office I was in for a while. So, and there's all kinds of different ways to uh, measuring tools and other tips in all these areas. <clears throat> so dig your book out and get more information. Um, standing. Merely moving from sitting to standing can substantially increase your energy consumption. When you stand, you begin to use weight bearing neat. And one of the great advantages of weight bearing neat is that the heavier you are, the more calories you expend. It's actually more effective than the more you weigh. So hey, that's one time when weighing more actually comes in handy, but that's not exactly your goal. But anyway, if you're uh, the good news is if you're overweight, you can start off slow and still receive the benefits of increased movement. And although you'll begin to burn fewer calories per minute as you lose weight, you'll easily compensate for that decrease by being in better shape for more activity. Some ideas with this would be at work, get out of your chair as much as you can. Stand when talking on the phone. Use a mobile phone with an earpiece or a portable headset, even if you have to buy it yourself. Remember, you're investing in your health. Get rid of comfy couches and get a standing desk. At home, do all those same things. Plus, stand while you prepare meals. Wash dishes at the sink. Iron clothes, watch TV, and read the newspaper. The next category is strolling. It means walking. When he talks about this in terms of neat, he's referring to anything outside of a formal walking program. That includes going to the water cooler, delivering a memo to your boss, or shopping for the new dress at a mall. Remember, the point of neat is that it takes place within your normal routines. It doesn't require a lot of extra effort. As we get older, we typically take fewer steps per day. After age 60, most people are down to about 4,500 steps. Our goal is to increase your daily step count to over 10,000, achieved mostly through NEAT and supplemented if necessary through Dr. A's EAT system walking program. And we'll be talking about that next week. And some neat ideas for strolling at work. Walk around the room when you're on the phone. Walk to work or park your car farther away. Talk to co-workers in person rather than by email or phone. Have walking meetings. Choose the farthest restroom and water cooler. Have your lunch or fueling in the park. Try out a walk and work desk. At home, take the dog for a walk. Most people meet, face, meet people face to face rather than shouting from the other room. Go to the mall and window shop. Park your car as far as safely possible from your destination. Walk on the beach instead of sunbathing. Pass on elevators, escalators, and drive throughs Get off the couch. <clears throat> Our next category are stairs. And stairs are a great way to accelerate need. In fact, climbing just one flight of stairs is the equivalent of walking 100 steps. One flight equals 100 steps. That means climbing 10 flights of stairs gives you the same benefit as half a mile of walking. And there are about 2,000 steps in a mile. When you climb stairs, you're actually lifting your total mass against gravity, making this one of the most effective neat activities available. Speed is not critical here, so it's a great activity, even if you're overweight. And since it's a weight-bearing activity, you burn more calories the heavier you are. Another great benefit of stairs is that they're readily available. Even when it's raining or cold outside, you can use stairwells where you work or in any multi-story building. Just say no to elevators and watch your neat increase. A little note of caution, stair climbing is a moderately intense activity. If you're overweight and relatively inactive, see your physician first. Start slowly and pay attention to any signs that your body needs to take it easy. The good news is if you add your neat activities in the order we're suggesting, you should be fine by the time you get to stair climbing. So at work, you can take the stairs instead of the elevator or escalator, especially in bad weather when you can't walk outside. Use the restroom or water cooler on a different floor. Take a stair break instead of a coffee break. At home, walk the stairs at the mall, bar ballpark, or department store. <clears throat> and then the next area is samba or dance. Do you like to dance? Hey, this is uh, what we're looking at movement generated by your body's natural rhythm. 
put out a song you like and watch what happens. You might start tapping your pencil or your foot or even singing at the top of your lungs. There's a term for music's capacity to lift us up in this way. Ergogenic, E-R-G-O-G-E-N-I-C. And ergogenic aid is anything outside your body that boosts physical or mental performance, either by increasing your capacity to perform, removing psychological constraints to perform, or speeding your recovery after exertion. For the EAT system activities, we'll learn to use music to distract you from any discomfort and enhance your performance. And uh, as you'll see in chapter 19, music and rhythm can even help decrease inflammation. Sounds interesting. For the purposes of NEAT though, we'll be focusing on music's ability to enhance motion by amplifying brain arousal, a phenomenon that researchers have shown may actually increase the intensity of your activity. That means you're burning more calories. And in Dr. Ray's book, whatever gets you moving is a great way to increase NEAT especially when it's so much fun to do. So hey, at work, turn on your iPod at lunch, go outside and get in motion. At home, use music to augment everything you do on your own, from gardening to cleaning. Avoid music in situations where it prevent you from hearing or interacting with others though. This talking also increases need. Go dancing. Start with ballroom and work your way up to tap dancing, square dancing, and eventually more intense dances like jitterbugging and hip hop. And then the last category is switch. And switch means you're going to be doing things by hand instead of machine. That includes dishwashers, electric knives, snow blowers, remote controls, computers, and all the automatic devices that steal energy steal from your energy use account at an ever-growing pace. Your goal is to burn an extra 30 calories per day doing tasks by hand that you previously had machines do for you. Now, don't do a switch to movements that can cause repetitive injury or exacerbate a current condition like tendonitis. So at home, or at work rather, take notes and sharpen pencils by hand. At home, put away the appliances and start doing kitchen and other indoor chores by hand. Take out the garbage, rake the leaves, snow, shovel snow, wash your car by hand, and mow your lawn with a hand mower. Your neighbors will love the peace and quiet. quiet. And uh, some neat pointers to maintain your healthy weight, aim to burn about 200 calories a day through neat activities. Be good to your heart. As you add new neat activities or increase your level of effort, keep checking your heart rate, especially if you feel lightheaded or weak. Make sure it's in the 50 to 60% range until you feel comfortable. Once you're on your way to becoming fit, this will no longer be required. Don't be discouraged if you have a lot of weight to lose. It can actually work to your advantage. The more you weigh, the more calories you burn with each movement, particularly when it comes to weight bearing activities such as walking, stair climbing, and dancing. Pretty neat, huh? Get comfortable with the NEAT program before you move on to the more vigorous exercise. But it's important to take it slow because exercise is good for maximizing health and fitness and creating optimal health. If you're worried about gaining your weight back, Dr. Ray assures us that our NEAT system is the great equalizer to a sedentary life. And um, that's pretty much it. He's got a story in here about a lady named Lisa Castro. And if you've jumped onto some of the Habits of Health calls on Wednesday, which I highly encourage you to do, if you miss them live, no big deal. Catch the recordings or some on my co-branded website. And they're also, I think it's at bit.ly.com or bit.ly bit slash H-O-H playbacks. They're really good. So many neat topics and things. But um, Lisa is one of the people that is actually hosts them every once in a while. And um, her story was said, shortly before I began the journey to optimal health in 2003, I was diagnosed with connective tissue disease, worsened by stress. I was so fatigued and achy that I had to will myself out of bed every morning. And I knew I needed to take better care of myself. I just didn't have the time or the energy. Within three months of starting the journey, I lost almost 25% of my body weight, going from a size 12 to a size zero petite. And that's despite having low thyroid. In fact, the nurse said I have results that others would envy. I use the habits of health all the time. 
I eat five to six small, low-fat, balanced meals each day and practice a regular exercise routine. The amazing benefits have been that I don't hurt anymore, and I now have the energy to exercise regularly. It's amazing what good nutrition can do. I've gone from dreading the thought of getting out of bed to feeling excited about the future and eager to seek new experiences. My husband and I are enjoying our lives so much now that we have the freedom to pursue our dreams and regain health to achieve them. We call it our midlife improvement. I like that. You get a midlife improvement. No crisis here. And gosh, she's, I think, gone skydiving and they do kayaking. She's done all kinds of things that she's done. And it's pretty exciting. And you know what? We work up to those little by little. You know, my story, I was the girl that just you know, two and a half, three years ago, I would go to a shopping center, not even on my car. I hurt too bad to even think about getting out of my car and going in to shop. And uh, now over the past couple of years, having lost 137 pounds, I, I enjoy walking and I don't have to think twice about it. So I've done, I think I've done six 5Ks now. I've done one 10K and one four miler. And that to me is amazing. But I didn't start out once. I got out one day at lunch when I decided to do that. And I think I made one loop around the parking lot, spent the rest of the time resting in my car. The next day, I pushed myself to do a couple of loops and just kept building until I was walking for my entire half hour of lunch. And uh, so it's possible. So don't think you have to conquer the whole world all at once. Start doing little things at once. Hey, while you're watching TV tonight, get moving, grooving. And we'll see you back here next week. Thanks so much for taking time to invest in your health. Your future self will thank you.